Hello, friends. Welcome to the Cold War Prepper and attempt number six to tape this little message to you about what I'm doing to prepare for Snowmageddon 2.0, Snowmageddon 2022. Um, so some of these, are, a lot of these are going to be lessons I learned from Snowmageddon 2021, uh, which we had in February. So just remember here in Texas, we are in the south. We don't get snow and ice that often, so we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have snow removal equipment. We don't have the stuff that the people up north who get snow for three months out of the year, four months out of the year, will have in their facilities. Uh, we just spend our money on other stuff. Now, at the same time, I don't think you have 120 degree winter, uh, summers either. So, you know, remember the climate and the environment. Give us a break. You know, we are not a northern state. Uh, so we have to prepare differently for uh, snow, snow events, ice events, cold events uh, that are coming up. So <clears throat> what are some of the things? Number one, stay in communications. Find out what's going on. We've had a tornado outbreak with the weather. Uh, yesterday, there were 11 tornadoes on the ground at pretty much the same time in the Dallas-Fort Worth McKinney area. So you want to stay up to date with what's going on in the community. Get yourself a good uh, scanner uh, so you can monitor the police, raid, uh, fire, and emergency services uh, channels. Uh, get yourself a nice little hand crank solar uh, battery combination flashlight radio and now the nice thing about this one is it also has a plug back in the back so that as you're using the hand crank you can use that to mechanically generate power to refresh uh, anything like a, a cell phone or a flashlight or anything like that um, so next we're going to talk about uh, uh, top off your gas tank in your vehicle so you can have if you need to you can go out outside out in the driveway not in your garage and turn on the heater to your car and, and warm up that way. Take a blanket or two with you so you warm them up at the same time. Do me a favor, take the carbon monoxide detector with you as well and put it on the floorboard of the car. If it sounds, open the doors, get out of the car. Um, you don't want any carbon monoxide present at all. Uh, it's just too dangerous. And, and you're gonna kill yourself if you try to do this inside your garage. I would say not even in a carport, okay? <clears throat> get out in your driveway um, if you're gonna do that. Third one is candles, and candles do two things. They provide light and they provide heat. For light, uh, I tell you what, you can't do any better than this 115-hour par liquid paraffin candle. A dozen of them for $30, I think, something like that, on Amazon. I'll put, try to put as many of the links down below as I can of the things I'm recommending. Next to my bed and next to the bed in the guest room, we have uh, an Uko candle. This is a 12-hour beeswax candle so that you know we can use those for for emergency purposes um, you know similar to that in each one of our rooms we have a candelier so this has three candles these are paraffin they only burn for nine hours the beeswax burns for 12 hours but these three also because they're confined here do produce enough heat, uh, heat where you can use the top gets warm and you can use it to warm up a, a cup of coffee or warm up a, a cup of water for for hot chocolate or tea or something like that it's not going to boil it. It's not going to make it hot, but it will get it warm. And, then, and of course, that does put off residual heat. Um, so anytime you have an open flame, and we're talking candles, uh, then you also want to have two things. You want to have make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector. You're probably not going to get any carbon monoxide from a paraffin or beeswax candle, but just be safe. Get a carbon monoxide detector. Put it at least waist level or lower. Uh, carbon monoxide is slightly heavier than air. So, you know, you're safer the lower it is. Uh, then make sure you have a fire extinguisher in every room in your house. Now to use this, it's called PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. Pull the pin, aim the blue nozzle at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and then sweep. So go side to side across that entire width of the fire. That's PASS. So that's how you use a fire extinguisher. Make sure you check the rating on the fire extinguisher so that um, down here it'll tell you what kind of fires it's good for you don't want to use one on the wrong kind of fire because what you can do is you can make it worse so probably one of the worst ones is make where it really 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 matters is in the kitchen where you're going to have grease fires or electrical fires or gas fires you want to make sure you have the exact right uh, fire extinguisher for that um, then after candles of course continue on with flashlights my favorite company used to be Nebo uh, I probably have a dozen of these throughout the house, um, one in every room almost. Um, I, I recently bought two more, and unfortunately, the on-off switch is defective. 
and I uh, can't get those traded in, so I'm looking for a new flashlight company. But I'll show you what I do have now, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm with flashlights the same way I am with knives, and the same way I am with, uh, you know, these things, and uh, that, you know, just can't get enough of them. <laughs> Don't know what it is. I'm addicted, I guess. I uh, just love flashlights. But anyhow, I love this. I loved, past tense D, this flashlight, uh, magnetic bottom. And then it's got a mag magnet here, so you can kind of put it on the refrigerator and light up an area. You can, you can stand it up on top of things. You can put it on your car. Uh, just great. It's flat. It's USB rechargeable. Just great little flashlight. Um, Such from uh, uh, Sensible Prepper it has a sale that he's announcing, and he gets a small uh, affiliate fee for selling these. Uh, but you're going to get like up to a 40% discount on his link tonight. Uh, that starts at 10 o'clock tonight, uh, the 15th, and it goes until the 19th on Olights, and that's his preferred brand. And uh, so, <clears throat> you know, that's one of the ones I'll be considering. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm considering one that uh, it's going to be like 50% off, and it's a combination flashlight laser pointer for my, you know, this thing. And uh, so I'm going to probably get one or two of those. Uh, but uh, continuing on with flashlights, so the one, this is illegal in California. This is called the laser and it does have a laser beam on it. So right now I'm thinking if I point a laser beam on somebody, you know, and they, and they can think that it's attached to one of these, uh, and that's enough to scare them. But uh, you can't have this in California because of that laser. Uh, this is the one I keep in my EDC, and this is called the Inspector. So nice little flashlight, very lightweight, very small, doesn't take up much room. This is my EDC flashlight. Uh, it's being replaced, I found a, uh, at, at, at Camp Mabry, I found an Olight, so I've got a little bitty Olight I'll be showing you in my haul video. I mean, it uses one AAA battery, and I mean, it's the size of my pinky finger, so <clears throat> I'm going to keep it on my key ring. But this is the one that I, I have a couple of these, the Torchy. Uh, you can put it on the bill of your hat here, and it's got three different settings, 1200, I think 800, and 600 lumens. Uh, and, and 1200 only lasts like two or three hours. Once again, it's USB rechargeable. So when I look at a flashlight, I want something that's going to have high lumens. I want something that's in a very durable container that can get wet and not worry about it, and that is USB rechargeable. Uh, next one is get yourself some wool blankets and some sleeping bags. Uh, I did a video a little while back about how I lived in Germany in the barracks in the, in the bachelor enlisted quarters with nothing more than an army wool blanket and a wooby. Great sleeping system. Get yourself a sleeping bag. Use it in your house. That'll keep you warm. Uh, when you're inside your sleeping bag. You're creating a mini climate or a mini environment inside your sleeping bag or inside your, your uh, wooby and, and uh, uh, wool blanket. Um, the next one is alternate power. Consider how you're going to get that alternate power in. So now is the time to service your gas generator. I have a uh, Honda 5KW generator. So tomorrow I'll be checking the plugs, the filters. Uh, I'll be making sure that the gas is good and not corrupt. Um, and then I'll you know, do all the maintenance and everything on it to make sure it's ready to go. Now that you have your generator ready to go, how do you get the power from the outside to the inside? That becomes your next question. So you use an extension cord and you run it through your door and then you slam your door shut on the extension cord, right? No, because you're going to short circuit that extension cord and it can cause an electrical fire. You don't want to do that. So you're going to leave your door or, or window slightly ajar and then you're going to have either styrofoam or you're going to have blankets or you're going to have towels or something and you're going to pack those into the to the cavities that you're leaving open because the window or door is open and tape those in place and try to get as much padding in there as possible so that you're sealing off that area so that the cold air doesn't come in solar system i have a whole house solar system i also have a jackery uh jackery pro uh the problem with the solar system is for the first half of snowmageddon 2021 uh, you know, we had our, my panels were covered with snow and ice and they couldn't see anything. If, even if they didn't have the snow and ice, it was so overcast that it wasn't producing anything anyway. Uh, so then day six, we finally started producing a little bit of power. The nice thing was we were having rolling brownouts. So we were getting, uh, electrical power for four hours a day, uh, for those first five, six days. And then we got them for eight hours a day, two, four hour periods, uh, for the last five days before we went back to standard. And those four hours we were getting electric electricity was at night, which is great because uh, it was repowering my, my re recharging my battery. And then during the daytime after that, you know, on days five on, day six on, uh, I was generating power during the daytime. So, you know, and things were looking great. Um, 
So as long if you only want to give me four hours of power a night, I'm happy with that. I, I can deal with that with my existing system. <clears throat> with the Jackery, just throw it out in the backyard, bring it in. I'm not going to use that for a, a, a local small space heater. Don't, you don't want to use solar for heating. Just the, the heating elements use too much electricity. <clears throat> uh, you want a space heater? Mr. Buddy, uh, I, I, we sold out here in the greater Austin area in Snowmageddon. Uh, I have a Mr. Buddy and I use it. And then you've got the one pound tanks. They're quite expensive in, in my opinion. Uh, so I bought an adapter and that adapter can go to a 20 pound tank. And uh, so that's what we'll be using interior is the Mr. Buddy system with the tank. There are a couple states that don't allow Mr. Buddy. I think California doesn't allow it. Maybe one or two other uh, West Coast uh, states don't allow Mr. Buddies. Uh, but then and I'll do a, I'll do an opening, a box opening on this one. Uh, I found this one, um, this company in, uh, on a YouTube video. So this is the Vesta uh, Instafire. And so the Provident Prepper did a video on this and that's what really got me to, to buy it because they did a full demonstration on it. So I'll do a box opening and a demonstration on it. But basically you, you can fit three cans of the Duraflames. Now these are the same, uh, don't use Sterno. These are the ones uh, that you get to for, for the uh, heating line in, in, in hotels and stuff when you're going through a buffet and they're using it to cook eggs and stuff like that. So get the ones that are indoor safe, okay? It's called safe heat. You put three of these on a tray and then this tray slides into this machine. So back here, the first one of these is gonna produce the heat that gets converted to electricity and runs a fan that blows air across the top of the machine. Then the other two are going to be put here and here and they're going to produce the heat. So that now what happens is that that wind, that air is being blown out with the heat into your area and it's pretty much fire safe and it's pretty much carbon monoxide safe. Now the other nice thing about this is when you pull the tray out, it's got a cover. So if you want to, you can use these two for cooking or you could use all three, I guess, for cooking. Uh, but you can, you can also adjust the amount of heat you want by how many safe heats you're putting inside here to burn. So you need a minimum of two, but you can go up to a maximum of three. So that's the other interior heating system. I'll do a box opening. I'll have Helen uh, videotape me opening that box because it did arrive. Uh, you've been seeing me get the safe heat, one case of safe heat, every time I go to Sam's for the last three months because I knew that, uh, I was, that I had the system. I've had it for a couple months. I just haven't opened it yet. So I'll do that. I'll open it and give you a video on it. Oh, gosh, that, that, that picture has my notes on the back. Okay. <clears throat> um, make sure your head and feet are covered. So Helen got it at the, uh, ex the, the, the Prepper Expo, a prepared, Disaster Preparedness Expo in January of 2020 up in Belton. <clears throat> the Amish had a table and they were selling wool socks and Helen bought me a couple of pairs of natural wool socks. My God, the best thing I have ever worn in my life. Warm, nice, comfortable. The merino socks, just unbelievable. Uh, the other thing is protect your head because you lose a lot of, of warmth through your head. Get yourself a watch cap, not a knit cap, not a stocking hat, a watch cap. And you can get these at Army Navy stores. You can get it on Amazon. Just make sure you're getting the right thing. So reach inside, pull it out. And when you pull it out, make sure it says this on the inside, cap, knit, watch, U.S. Navy, you know, the contract number and everything else. If it's good enough for the sailors to wear on the conning tower of a submarine as it's plowing through Arctic ice and it keeps their head warm, then guess what? It's good enough for Lee during Snowmageddon 2.0 in Austin, Texas. <clears throat> Next one is boiling water and uh, keeping it warm. So when I had my disaster response company, I had these, in, uh, these air pots for coffee. So what I do now is I make my pot of coffee in the morning. I'll pour half of it in here. Then I'll get half my, you know, that, that coffee through the system into my cup, drink it. Then I come back after I drink that first cup, I'll get the other half of that pot off of the burner for the coffee maker and pour it in here. That interior is cooled down just a little bit. Now I'm adding more heat on top of it. So it rewarms it. So that way I, this will keep my coffee warm for about 16, 18 hours. If you do it that way, if you pour it all in at one time, it's going to be about uh, 10, 12 hours. OK, uh, but get yourself some sort of a thermos to keep hot water in. While you're boiling that water, 
go ahead and get yourself some hot water bottles. And you can use those to keep warm, either to hold or to put in your bed, to put in between the sheets, put inside your, your uh, sleeping bag, whatever you're going to do. Um, then, have I talked about microclimates? I'm so sorry. I've done this six times and it hasn't recorded. So, I, you know, I, hopefully I'm getting better as I go along as, as I'm doing this. Microclimates, back in the Middle Ages, they had canopy beds, the four-poster beds with everything around it. And you can create that same environment. So what you're doing is you're exhaling and the exhalations are 98.6 degrees. You're creating a small microenvironment. Make sure you have plenty of fresh air coming in, however, because you don't want to have pure carbon dioxide. You can build it, make a game out of it. Take the kitchen table or, or your, your dining room table and throw a blanket over it and create a tent and tell the kids that's where you're sleeping tonight. Or go buy yourself a small tube tent, you know, tube frame tent uh, that, you know, uses those tent, uh, flexible poles on the inside and it's self-contained. And tell them you're sleeping, you're playing a game. You're going to sleep in that for, for the night. And uh, so what you're doing is you're confining that area of your exhalations to a smaller space and that allows it to produce a little bit of heat for you instead of in a larger space. Uh, and then finally, oh, I wanted to talk about boiling water outdoors. Grill. Uh, if you have a propane grill, if you have a charcoal grill, that's a good way to do it. If you've got a hibachi, that's a good way to do it. If you've got wood stove, whatever. Uh, I use a Kelly kettle. Uh, I also have a solo stove. I have a sterno stove. I have a Coleman stove. I have all kinds of different stoves. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of paranoid about not being able to cook uh, in post SHTF. Uh, probably the one I'm going to use most for boiling water is going to be my Kelly kettle. I put a little bit of chips down at the bottom of the, of the uh, chamber, ignite those, put the Kelly kettle on top, put the water in. Now what that does is the chimney is actually the, 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 also the heating element. Uh, so you've got your water is surrounding that chimney so it heats up very quickly. I can probably boil a pot of water, a quart of water in like two or three minutes. Um, and then I'll use that and that's going to be my hot water. And that's very, you know, uh, efficient and effective. Uh, Rudy, Alaska prepper, really loves his jet boil. So I have a feeling he does all of his um, water boiling with his jet boil system. And, and that's, that's a fantastic system. Uh, I just, I'm scared of storing way too much liquid uh, flammables in, in the area. He does have an outdoor area where he can store that. So, you know, I think if, if I were in his position, I would probably do the exact same thing. That, that jet boil is a fantastic, phenomenal system. So the last thing I want, to, want you to consider is getting some hand warmers. Unfortunately, I got mine out at Walmart. Uh, got two big ones, got two small ones. I have a feeling that since the governor announced today the possibility of Snowmageddon 2.0, Walmarts in the Austin area are probably sold out of hand warmers. In other areas, they might not be, but you know, I would say go get them now, uh, if not the first thing tomorrow morning before they sell out. And uh, But anyhow, that's an idea. That's what I'm doing to get ready for Snowmageddon 2.0, Snowmageddon 2022. So remember, we're all in this together so we can come out the other side together. Please be kind, polite, and respectful to each other because togetherness is the key. Bye-bye.